Hi everyone, July 2021 State of the Collection video. Uh, really doing this more for myself, but uh, if you guys are interested in any of the watches, enjoy. I'll try to talk about uh, the size, why they fit my wrist, um, why I like them, etc. So we'll first start with the IWC Portofino Chronograph. This is actually the watch that got me into watch collecting. Uh, and it's special because this is actually a, a wedding gift from my wife's family. Uh, my wife is Korean and I'm half Korean. And in the Korean tradition, uh, when a couple gets married, uh, the family of the wife will buy a nice watch for the family of the, the, the husband. This is a watch that I think is really interesting because uh, for me personally, this is uh, a watch that I picked out without knowing really anything about watches. I mean, I do have some history. So my mom was a watch sales salesperson um, when I was really young. Uh, and she stopped doing that uh, maybe when I was six or seven. So. I don't remember much about it, but I do, I do always know, I, I, or I always knew that uh, my mom knows about watches and sells watches. And, and, and so I did remember that, uh, but this one I, I picked out, we went to a bunch of different stores on fifth Avenue in New York, and I picked this one out, not knowing anything. So it's probably the most aesthetically pleasing to me. This is, you know, I, I consider this the watch that, uh, without any bias or Instagram or anything like that, this is the one I picked out. So. That means I just must inherently like this. I love uh, how there's, you know, the, the white dial. I love the, uh, the balance of the chronograph dials. It's practical. It's got the day, uh, the date. Um, and uh, there's almost no bezel. It's 42 mil millimeters in diameter. Um, and my wrist is about six and a quarter inches. Uh, and even at 42, and even though it does have presence, uh, it fits well. The uh, the lug to lug is short, and the lugs are short enough that it fits my wrist well. Um, and this uh, this Milanese bracelet, uh, I also loved, uh, and I think it just looks great. Um, so I'll never sell this watch. Um, I really love it, uh, uh, and that's that's all there is to it. Uh, it's sporty so or dressy, so I'll, I'll wear it in both occasions. I mean, I wore it with a suit on my wedding day, so. The second watch uh, that I got after that is this Bertucci uh, A1R. Uh, this is a quartz piece. Um, basically, I got this because uh, I didn't really wear watches before I got this uh, IWC and I needed, uh, now that I started to get into watches, I thought I needed just a practical watch I can wear when doing sports uh, or things like that. And I got this and it's uh, 36 millimeters across. I'll put it on now. I wear it when I play pickup soccer, uh, basically. Uh, Cause we need, uh, a lot of the time we need the time uh, to tell when we should switch goalkeeper because we never really have goalkeepers to play with. Uh, but this, um, I mean, it does the job. It's really light. It's only like one and a half ounces or something. Um, but it has really low water resistance. So I can't really, uh, if I would go camping or hiking and I want to swim with it, I can't really use it. So even though I thought it would be good, like kind of an outdoors watch too, it's not the most practical. So I am thinking about instead uh, getting a G-Shock maybe a DW5600 uh, or one of the tough solar models. Uh, so maybe this won't last in my collection, but, uh, but it does the job and I, and I know I, I do wear it. Um, and I like the, uh, the NATO strap that it's on. It's quite thick. So uh, it's really supple and nice. Um, so I do like this watch, even though if I do get a, a G-Shock, maybe I won't wear this as much. Uh, the next one is an Orient Bambino version two. Uh, in the same kind of vein, I thought, you know, maybe I should save the, the IWC for, for nice occasions. Uh, and 
is there a watch I can wear more often that I don't need to worry about as much? Um, and so I bought this. This is uh, an automatic watch uh, from Orient that costs around $100. The, the Bertucci, by the way, costs around 50 And this one um, is just nice. I just really like the, the design of it. It's clean. Uh, um, it's a dress watch. Uh, and over time, though, my thoughts on this watch changed. So I think the dial size is around 39 or 40. Maybe it's a 40, I think. So still fits my watch, but uh, to be honest, for a dress, it seems a little bit big, uh, or at least in my opinion, uh, when I bought it, because I didn't try it on before I bought it. I just bought it off Amazon. Um, and also, I kind of thought after I bought this and and wore it for a bit, I kind of thought to myself, you know, why am I babying the IWC? If it's my watch and I'll never sell it, and I love it, then I should just wear it. Uh, so that's what I do. I actually just wear the IWC, and it's got a bunch of knocks and all sorts of other things, and I don't care. And so this actually, <laughs> this watch I don't wear that much anymore. So I'll probably try to to sell it if I can, or give it away, um, because it, it really has no purpose in my collection. But I do like the the blue hands, and it's practical with the date. Uh, and actually, when you wind it, it just feels so nice. I don't know. It's not really uh, can't describe it. It doesn't have much resistance. Uh, but I think this is going away. I'd rather just watch Wear of the IWC. The next one I got was the Oris. Now, after I uh, got the IWC watch and I started to get into watches, started to read a lot and do a lot of research on all different types of brands um, and in the luxury segment, uh, and I started to, uh, like divers, uh, especially kind of vintage dive watches. I really like the design of vintage dive watches. And, uh, the funny thing is what I really liked was, uh, when I first learned about it was a Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms. Um, and I actually have one here, so you'll see that. But in the beginning, uh, I thought, you know, getting a 50 Fathoms is maybe, too much money for what I wanted to spend. And I saw this Oris after doing a lot of research uh, with this funky dial. Uh, you know, you don't see a dial like this with these this weird font. Uh, it feels very 70s or 60s. Um, and, uh, but it's still a modern watch, right? This is a reissue of an old Oris watch. This is the uh, Oris Di Heritage Diver 65. And with this, uh, because it's it's uh, it's a reissue and it's a modern watch. You can still be used for swimming. So I wanted a watch that I could still use for swimming. I'll worry about it. Uh, the funny thing, this is only a hundred meter water resistance. I mean, that's fine for swimming, but it's not kind of your like your uh, as much water resistance as other dive watches. But I just love the Tropic strap, um, and I like the dial. It also just fits great. Uh, and it's got a date function, and I, I love it because the date function uh, is kind of uh, out of the way. You don't really see it. It's down on the bottom by the six, and, uh, you know, it's just not so conspicuous. So I like this, but after a while, I, uh, I started to fall out of love with it. I think it's because even though the dial is cool, I feel like there's just something missing. I don't know. I, I was thinking maybe the, the one with the blue... A ring around the dial might be more interesting, but um, but I'm trying to sell this now. Uh, I bought this um, used when I bought it off of eBay, actually, um, and I'm, I'm for about a thousand dollars, and I'll try to sell it for maybe nine fifty. See if I can recoup my money. Uh, so I I did like this watch. I still think it's a cool design, but I don't wear it as much as I would like. Uh, and I, I think there's just something missing in the design. The other, at the same time, uh, I saw this micro brand Baltic. And I think in this video, maybe can't see the blue, uh, but the blue in the light really shines, the blue of this dial. So this is the Baltic Aqua Scaf. Um, and uh, for the price point of around, I think I bought this for around $800, maybe $700, $800. 
I think this is just a great watch. Uh, it's got that vintage uh, inspired design, very simple, uh, but then also very practical. You know, this uh, it's 200 meter water resistant, comes on a really cool bead of rice br uh, bracelet. Um, I thought that for the, for the money, I thought this was just too good of a watch uh, because I love the design so much that I, 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 I couldn't uh, say no really. And so this is actually the reason why, I'm sorry, the shaky camera a little bit. This is the reason why I probably don't wear the Oris as much as I would, I would like. Once I got this Baltic, when I go swimming, when I go to the beach, when I go to the pool, this is the watch I wear. This is the watch I wear. And I, I feel like I can bring this on vacation, traveling. Uh, it's not so expensive that I need to baby it or worry about it. It's meant to be used. It's meant to be a tool watch. Uh, so this is what I use traveling. And I, um, I love it. I don't think this is leaving my collection anytime soon. I also have a, a rubber. I bought a rubber strap from Barton, a blue rubber strap that I wear it on. Uh, as well, but most of the time it's on this beads of rice bracelet. After that, um, this is my Ball Fireman Racer. Now this is kind of an interesting find that I found on eBay. Uh, and before I saw it on eBay, I never heard of ball watches or seen a ball watch in my life. Um, but I thought this design, this dial design was just really cool. Uh, it's got a black dial. It's got 12, uh, six and nine, like an Explorer, but it also has a date functionality. It's got the Cyclops, which I just, I, I, I love any Cyclops. So that's actually what attracted me to uh, a date chest that you'll see. But, uh, I just thought the dial design was amazing. Um, it's also got a hundred meter water resistance. So I thought this could be another watch I can take and not worry about. I can swim with, I can go hiking and camping with. Uh, and I have, I've used this um, as kind of an outdoors watch because it seems like it can take a beating. Uh, I did get it from Malaysia on eBay. And I think there is probably, it probably needs a service. I mean, it runs fine. I think it's like minus three seconds a day, last I checked, um, but I don't know, sometimes I, I, I feel like it just stops for some reason. So I, I am a little suspicious of this one, so I need to take it to get a service. I have it here on this Artem uh, sailcloth strap, uh, which is really nice. I, I have, I, I've, I've loved this strap since I bought it. It's not cheap. I mean, it's, you know, 90 bucks or something like that, but it's well worth it. Uh, and the cool thing about the ball too watch is the more I learned about ball watches, kind of the history and how it was a big part of the trains and times for trains in the US is, is, is cool as well. Um, so I don't think I'll sell this watch either uh, uh, anytime soon, just because I, I like it so much. And I bought it for like $400, even though, you know, I think new, this is, you know, over a thousand. Uh, great watch, this one. Next, we move on to, you know, for me, these are heavy hitter watches, the most money I've spent on, on, on watches. And this is kind of when I knew, you know, maybe I'm, I have a problem or I need to figure something out. But uh, from the beginning, so after the IWC and after I started to learn more about watches, I mean, this was kind of the, the dream watch, this, uh, this 36 millimeter uh, Rolex Datejust in silver. So 126, 234. Um, it's the newest version. Uh, so it's got uh, this clasp on the Jubilee bracelet. Um, and the, the chapter ring is different than in the, the earlier, the 116, 234s. Uh, but this one, you know, I just think it's an amazing timeless design. And you can't really go wrong. It'll take a beating. Uh, and yet can still be used as a dress watch and a sports watch. Now the fluted bezel, I think, you know, once you see it in person, you put it on, it does, uh, does definitely feel a little bit more dressy and blingy and shiny, but you know, it's right on the line, right? You can use it for anything. Uh, and it's just a really nice. So right now it's actually sized for my wife and my wife has super small wrists. Um, 
but it works on her too. Even this, it looks big on her, but a 36 is, uh, it, it looks great on her as well. So this actually size for her. I can't even fit the clasp on my wrist right now. So let's see if I can even take it off. Okay. So this one won't be going away from the collection too. The other reason I like this too is I felt like if you buy a Rolex, you're kind of safe. On, uh, it won't lose that much value. Uh, so I, I, I feel okay about my money. I actually got it off uh, eBay, which is kind of funny. Uh, but one guy um, bought the watch for his wife uh, from a dealer, didn't like it, and sold it on eBay. And then this was during the time that eBay was getting into watches and uh, would give a $1,000 discount uh, if you buy a watch through eBay. So I thought, hey, I'm actually paying less than I would pay if I bought it directly from a dealer. So I, I thought I'd go for it. And then lastly in my collection at the moment is the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms uh, No Rad. Now this honestly uh, was an impulse buy. Um, I, I always loved the 50 Fathoms as a, as a watch collection uh, since I started to get into watches. I loved the design of this dive watch, you know, and I, when I looked at all the other dive watches like the Submariner, things like that, I, the 50 Fathoms was definitely my, my favorite. Um, the thing is when I tried on a 50 Fathoms 45 millimeter edition with, that they have, they're just too big. Uh, I, I, I couldn't make it work. Um, and uh, I was just on you know, I, I read Hodinkee and saw Hodinkee uh, was offering this uh, 50 Fathoms uh, No Rad for sale as a limited edition. Uh, they had done a few before, uh, but I just had the timing right. And I thought, you know, if I buy this, the limited editions of these are already going for much more than retail. It's 40 millimeters. If I, you know, if I, if it's too expensive and I feel like it's too big much of a purchase, I could sell it for more money. I felt confident about that. Uh, I also just love it. The 50 Fathoms is just a perfect watch. And this one is even cooler with this no rad design and the radiation symbol on the dial. Uh, a few things that are, you know, things that make this not the perfect watch, I would say. Um, the Fotina uh, Loom at first I thought, you know, eh, I don't know if I like that look, but over the time I've owned this, I don't, I don't mind it at all. I, I actually do enjoy it. Um, the date I've heard that people are not so sure about, but I, I think the date is fine here. Uh, I have no complaints about that. And it has, you know, the actual vintage versions of these had a date. So it is, uh, it's not like a modern uh, change. The polished, uh, the polished case, uh, maybe it would be better not polished, but I don't mind it, uh, polished either. The thing that does bother me though, is this bezel. Uh, it's just not practical. I mean, let's be honest. This is kind of like a, a luxury tool watch. It's not really a tool watch anymore, even though original design was, this is just a luxury piece, right? You're not, even though you could use this, this does have a 300 meter water resistance. You could use it as an actual dive watch. If you're, if you have this watch, you're, you're not using it as a dive watch, right? That's, that's just, if you have, you know, that the luxury to do so, this is really just a luxury piece. Um, but the bezel, you know, on the other, other limited editions, like the mil spec limited edition, uh, there's a bezel that has, you know, it, you can grip it. It's easier to grip because, but this one just has kind of a small, I don't know what to call this, not perforated, but it feels like a perforated section and it just it's hard to grip and it's hard to turn the bezel uh versus you know a 45 millimeter uh 50 fathoms or the other limited editions like the ocean commitment three uh or uh, the mil spec so that's my only complaint here but other than that this is amazing um i think though honestly i will sell this um i you know, because it's just a luxury piece, and uh, and even though I, to be honest, I don't baby it, uh, I feel like the money could be could go to other watches, and until the time that they make maybe a non-limited edition forty millimeter 
uh, 50 fathoms. Uh, I'll, I'll wait for that. Um, you know, the no rad is not, is not my dream version to buy. I just bought it spur of the moment uh, and thought I would enjoy it during the time I've had it, and I do. But with that, the kind of watches I'm thinking about are, you know, maybe what I do is I sell the NORAD to someone who would appreciate it more than I do at the moment. And instead, maybe I put the money into a few things I, I'm thinking about. Uh, there's a few watches that I think just look amazing. So that are the Octo Finissimo by Bulgari. I, um, it's just a, such a crazy new design, unlike anything else. It's so light, and when you try it on in person, it's absolutely amazing. It might look too big or thick or bulky, but it's even though it's very thin, it, it, it just has a huge presence. But because it's so thin, even at you know a 40 millimeter square, uh, it's on the wrist, it's just amazing. I think you, you might have to have certain types of wrists to, to wear it well, uh, but, but when I tried it on, it's amazing. So that's one. The other one is the Gerard Perigo Laureatu 38 millimeters. Um, you know, I'm not going to spend crazy amounts of money on a Royal Oak or a Nautilus. Uh, so I do like the GP Laureatu, and I, it's not like I like, uh, I think the design is worse than those other two, honestly. Um, so maybe for the amount of money, maybe it's a value, a good value pick. Um, but I don't know, because to be honest, you know, I do want to fully enjoy it, right? If I, there's all these people who say, if you want a Nautilus, don't just get something like a Laureatu just because, you know, you can't afford the Nautilus. So I don't know, but I do like the look of the watch. And the other one is the Omega Speedmaster classic. Um, I think... I've, I've seen the newer, the newer ones, the 2021 versions, uh, both the Hesalite and the Sapphire Sandwich, and they just feel so good. The bracelet is so nice on the wrist, um, surprisingly so. I didn't think I would, I would love it as much as I do. Uh, still not sure I would buy that watch, as um, there's probably stuff in my collection that fits that bill of kind of sporty with a, with a dark dial, but another one to look at. And the last, uh, let's see, last one is maybe a, a, I'm thinking about going more vintage and I've been doing a lot of more research at, on vintage watches. Um, and I've started to gain an appreciation of different vintage watches. Uh, I was actually looking for one that's a little bit more dressy, maybe a vintage 33 to 36 millimeter, uh, gold or steel dress watch. Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of value. I feel like in uh, watches like uh, from Movado. There's some, you know, definitely some old Pateks and Vacherons. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive, I would say, uh, so that at the 33 to 36 millimeter range. But there are ones like uh, Zenith, Gerard Perigo, um, Zodiac that all have dress watches in this 33 millimeter to 36 millimeter range. Uh, and there's some cool ones that probably can be gotten affordably. So looking into that, and by affordable, I mean, you know, 500 to $2,000. Um, even though if you want like an, a vintage IWC, uh, you know, caliber 89, they're probably getting into the 2000 to $3,000 range at the moment. So we'll see there. I haven't, haven't committed to anything or could get a you know, modern Cartier tank. Um, either the, the new must or maybe a solo, uh, the large size. I think those look great. Um, and then, uh, you know, another one that I just always love the look of is the GMT Master 2, the Rolex GMT Master 2, maybe a 1675 or a 16750. I mean, those are, you're definitely spending much more money now, uh, and those prices are high. Um, but but the, the look, the vintage look of those uh, is just timeless. And I love, I, I can't even decide whether I would like to do a Pepsi Bella bezel or a Coke bezel, but they just look great. Um, so who knows? I don't think I'm, I don't know if I'm ready to spend that money, but, um, but definitely in the future. And then lastly, of course, it's the a G-Shock to kind of replace the Bertucci. So that's the state of the collection for July 2021. I uh, hope you enjoyed and learned something, and please teach me something as well.
Take care.